Hello and welcome. This is the Astrology of the Week Ahead podcast. I'm your host, Chani Nicholas. And in this episode, we're talking about the astrology for the week of January 22nd, which is pretty calm, or at least I don't even want to say uneventful because I'm always afraid to say that, until the weekend. So on Tuesday, we have one shift happening, Venus, planet of love and relationship and connection and unity is moving into Capricorn. And here in Capricorn, Venus is going to be able to bestow upon us a great many gifts. Or this is a moment that is reflecting a pattern of generosity and innovation in our relationships and in the ways in which we create beauty. And there's actually a really lucky day that's happening this week. And that day is Sunday. Venus and Jupiter are going to come into a really helpful alignment. And it's amidst a lot of other really kind of wild, a little chaotic astrology. So it's a mixed bag this weekend. It's really active because on Thursday as things get going, we have a full moon in Leo. And look, full moons in fire signs are always going to be a little loud and a little extra because that's the nature of fire. Fire is here to get our attention. When you see light, you move towards it. Something beautiful and sparkly and warm and light draws our attention or gets our attention. And that's what one of the things that fire signs do. And they're lively and we might even say really active and need to be able to move with inspiration. So a full moon is always a moment of peak activity, and then a full moon in a fire sign is going to be ever more so. And then we've got this one in Leo, which is the drama queen of the uh, zodiac. So we know that there is an element of that already at work. Now, this is the first full moon in Leo, that we've had while Pluto has been in the opposite sign of Aquarius. So Pluto just re-entered Aquarius. And that means that this full moon is sitting in opposition to Pluto. So full moon brings an apex experience. Something gets magnified. Something is made obvious. And the thing it's sitting across from, besides the sun, is Pluto, off by about five degrees but it has just made a perfect opposition to it right before the moon is totally full. So we're feeling it. It's carrying that energy with it. Now, what does it mean to have the moon opposing Pluto, especially when Pluto's just re-entered a very new sign? Well, it's going to dramatically, because it's in Leo, magnify or shine a spotlight or reflect something that's happening with Pluto in Aquarius. And the Pluto in Aquarius of it all is a very collective signature. So we're looking at collective movements. We're looking at how people can remember that it's us that have the power. We're looking at any kind of advancements in terms of technology, in terms of tech. We're looking at the transformation of the ways in which we collectively come together and define ourselves. Pluto is about power. So anytime the moon, especially when it's full, is connected to Pluto like this, it's going to articulate something about power and the subterranean power dynamics that lurk under the surface. So on a collective level, we might be hearing a lot about those issues. People, masses, uprisings, and any kind of event that articulates subterranean power dynamics, especially that impact the collective. Now, I'm recording this back in November. I have no idea what is happening at the end of January. I'm not saying anything about a specific situation because I don't know what's happening in the future. I just know that this is what's occurring astrologically. Now, if it doesn't connect on a, on a public level or on a communal level or on a global level in a big kind of way, I do think it might, though, because it's also, this is also squaring Jupiter, and Jupiter is another magnifier, like a full moon is a magnifier, and then Jupiter just makes everything bigger. So the power issues and power dynamics 
definitely feel like they are being teased out right now. And again, performed or made obvious because of the nature of the sign that this full moon is happening in. Literally, Leo is the performer. So it feels performative. Not that people are doing performative things, although you never know, but (laughs) that there is something being enacted and made obvious here. If it doesn't connect on a kind of global level or make waves in the headlines, then I'm going to assume that this is a time where we're experiencing that in our personal life, where something about the power dynamics of our personal life that have not been addressed yet by us are articulated. And then I hope that, as with everything that happens in Leo, that there's some like fun and frivolity and dress up and theatrics that are just a good old fashioned good time. We can always hope for that. Okay, so that's the Thursday of it all. So it does feel like the week is moving towards this kind of big show that happens at the end of the week. And then on a Friday, the sun makes a you know perfect square to Jupiter, which is always a sign of something that we could overdo and also a signature of confidence. So Friday, we might feel like a big kind of burst of energy. It's also the day that Uranus, the planet of upheaval and change, stations direct. So it does also seem like this week is pulling focus on something that could be an update to a system or something that is disturbing to the status quo, hopefully for good reason, because we need to break from old paradigms that don't serve us anymore. On Saturday, we have something that is much more difficult to deal with and also a nice little gift. So Saturday and Sunday are very, very, very mixed. Saturday, Mercury, planet of communication, makes a conjunction with Mars, planet of giving orders and being direct to the point of sometimes hurting people's feelings and also being courageous and spicy and hot and direct and making a puncture and something. So Mercury and Mars coming together will say the thing. The thing will be said. And if that's happening in your personal life, you may or may not feel at ease with that kind of mixture. The people pleasers in the crowd will hate this astrology, but maybe it will actually activate something in you that gets you to finally say the thing that needs to be said. And it's not as big of a deal as you think it is once you say it. For the people in the room and the listening to this that have no problem saying anything that's on their mind, you might not even notice this astrology, (laughs) but it might be a weekend that brings up some hot topics, again, for us collectively. And I... I'm saying that also because Saturday, Mercury will do something called squaring, squaring the nodes. And then on Sunday, Mars will square the nodes. Now, the nodes are where eclipses happen. So because Mercury and Mars are coming together at a time where they're in between the north and south node, like exactly, there's something here that speaks to a larger pattern that's unfolding. It could be related to the eclipses we just had in October, could be related to the eclipses we will have three months from now-ish. But there's something here that is very specifically connected to what we're learning to do more of and what we're needing to decrease or what it is we need to understand about a certain crossroads that we're at. So I expect this weekend to bring up some really important conversations, conversations that might even seem to help us shift direction in a way that is going to hopefully, again, (laughs) encourage us to be more honest about where we need to go and what we need to do. And if it brings up an argument that helps us do that, then so be it. Obviously, be clear, be kind, be direct, but be appropriate. Be giving information that needs to be given, not information that will only do harm or or that isn't necessarily needed at this point. So that's one layer of the weekend. 
Another layer of the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, is that Venus, planet of love and connection and making everything better, is going to sextile Saturn on Saturday, and it's going to trine Jupiter on Sunday, which is one of the best things that can happen, one of the best things it can do. So, and also Mercury will go on to trine Uranus. So it does seem like by the later part of Sunday, maybe even into Monday, things work out or something else works out that kind of helps to smooth everything over. Or maybe because we have a difficult conversation, we get the goodies. Maybe because we're clear and kind and direct and honest and succinct and immediate, we get to actually experience connection. Maybe being in good relationships, being able to build trust with each other and therefore intimacy requires us to be able to move into conflict with each other or conversations that could lead to conflict with a faith in the process, knowing that we are not going to, we refuse to dehumanize each other, that we refuse to assume the worst of each other, and that we are dedicated to staying the course and discovering what it is we can become when we choose to have real, honest conversations. Something like that. Who knows? You tell me. You let me know how this all goes. And this is all happening right after a big dramatic full moon in Leo. So again, feels like there's a lot of energy going on. I'm not saying there won't be a lot of fun to be had too. It's a mix. It's kind of everything together. All right, y'all. That's the reading. Let's, let's go live it out without fear, without even any preconceived notions. And this astrology isn't going to land personally for everyone. So a lot of this will come and go and won't even land with you. Maybe it'll land kind of sprinkled around you. Maybe you'll see it on the world stage, or maybe you'll see it in your friend groups or at the meeting or at wherever, but it, it might not be personal for you. So just remember that piece as well. Sending you lots of love, many, many, many Venus trine Jupiter blessings on Sunday. Definitely after you do the hard stuff, whatever the hard stuff might be, take an action, have a conversation. Make sure that you center some delights, center some pleasure, and center relationships and connections and the beauty of all of those in your life. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for leaving us reviews in the App Store. We deeply appreciate it. I wanted to leave you with this one called A Truly Magical Experience. I first downloaded Chani last year as a trial to explore my birth chart and quickly found myself purchasing the yearly subscription. I was immediately immersed in all of the wonderful tools the app had to offer. The daily meditations were most transformative for me. As I was somewhat of a novice to meditation, and my ADHD brain found it to be challenging in the past, Chani's soothing voice and encouraging words helped me to feel safe in my practice. I now meditate consistently, and I have this app to thank. The weekly journal prompts and rituals also serve as a game changer. Chani brought back that magical spark to my life when I needed it most, and I will forever be grateful for that. I'll see you back here next week. Next week is a lot more chill, a lot more chill, a lot more chill than this week. And we've got a really exciting trine between Mars and Uranus on Monday. So we'll talk more about that then. Bye for now.